So here are your four columns. Okay, let's explore this in a little more of a systematic way. We'll start with something simple. Y equals x plus three. So these are all examples. Here are the, what does y equals x plus three look like? Come on, we just came out of this topic. It's a, it's a straight line. Its intercepts are at uh, three and negative three. Okay, there's the function. Don't even bother labeling it. Let's think about domain and range. Where does this graph exist? For domain, for x values, is there any x value where it stops, where it's like, I can't go there, I'm not allowed? No, it can just keep on going. That's why I have arrows, this side and this side, right? It goes on forever. So remember how I introduced for you this uh, little symbol here. I can say all real values of x, Right, and save myself writing the word real. But because this is a phrase that mathematicians say very, very frequently, they get sick of even writing something that short. So they introduce a new symbol. It looks weird, but I'll explain it in a second. So the way that you read this is x is an element, that's, that's why it looks like an e, of the real number set. But what it means is all real values of x. x can be any real number you like. Okay? All real values of x, if you're, not, if you're not too keen on the weird, funky Greek notation, then just say this, the sentence. <laughs> that was domain, so we were looking horizontally. What about vertically? Where does the graph exist? Up and down. It keeps going just like it does for the x values. So in this case, uh, I could say all real values of y, because it's about up and down. But I'm going to be cheap like a mathematician, and I'm just going to say that. Okay? So, that's a really simple relation. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, who was it? Was, was it you, Sean, who said the trick <laughs> identity? Was it you? Yeah. yeah. Now, this is a relation, right? Look, do you see? It looks just like an equation. It's got two variables, and it indicates there's a relationship between the two. Let's just draw a simple graph. We don't need to draw much of it. You know what sine x looks like. Again, I pose the same questions when I'm thinking about the domain. Where is this relation defined? What x values can it take on? Answer? Any x values I like. Look, see, it goes on forever. It's periodic. It repeats and repeats and repeats. So I'm going to say x can be any of those real numbers. But when I go to answer the question of range, it becomes a little more tricky because you can't just put in any y value you like. The graph can't simply exist anywhere up and down you like. It's locked in between negative 1 and 1. And you'll notice it's inclusive. It does get to 1, doesn't it? And it does go all the way down to negative 1. So make sure you include those boundaries. Right? So we're borrowing our inequality language to help us state something concrete about these relations. OK, let's keep marching forward. What's my other one? Uh, let's have a look here. Y equals, we were just looking in the quiz at these logs, right? You weren't required to draw any of them. But at the end of last year, hopefully you recall, you're only going to need this side of the axis because how would you describe it? What does it look like? It starts down here in the which quadrant? This is the fourth quadrant, okay? And then it starts off really steep and then it just slows down like that, right? And this is actually important. I've said don't worry about putting too much detail on here, but there's an important detail that we need to note here. Where does the graph start? Horizontally, where does it start? It's close to x. Now, it's a bit of a trick question because there is actually no place where it starts. There's no x value that you can say on the right of this. Oh, it starts at this value and no closer because you can always find a closer one, right? So in other words, this is x equals 0. That's the asymptote. That's important because when I think about domain, just like this, there's, a, there's sort of a, a restriction, but it's a different restriction. x has got to be It's got to be positive. Right? It's got to be positive. What about range? It can go anywhere, can't it? So I'm back to this situation up here. So y can take on any real value you like. Okay, I've got, I've got two more for you to have to think about. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, no, I'll do it. 
This is one we just alluded to about 10 minutes ago. What's this? It's the unit circle. That's a pretty ugly unit circle, but you get the idea. It's certainly enough to be able to say what the domain is. Where do I exist? Between negative one and one. It's inclusive because you actually can't go, the radius is one, so you can't go all the way out. And range. Again, it's the same, but for y instead of for x. Okay, now, I'm just lucky. I've got enough space to fit one more, and that's where I'm going to get you guys to finish the table just briefly. Last one I'm going to put on here again is a relation you've seen before, but we've never thought about it through this lens. This has a name. What's it called? Hyperbola. This is the hyperbola, right? So again, draw your axes. You're going to need to have the whole thing there. Here's our shape. Now, this one's interesting. Just like before, because they're important to be answering this question, I'm going to put the asymptotes on here. There are two. What are they? I've got x equals 0 and y equals 0. Good. Now, this poses a little bit of a problem for us, or a challenge at least, for how we state the domain in range. Let's just think about the one at a time. Domain. Can I say x is all real values? I can't say x is all real values. Because there's one particular real value for x that I can't take on, namely x equals 0. So one of the ways you can say this is all real values except x equals 0. That's fine. Okay. That's a bit of a mouthful though. A lot of people, I mean when you look at that sentence, a lot of people, please don't write this, are tempted to say x can't equal 0. Now you tell me, why is that not the domain? Look on the board even. Well, look at what you've written. The Why domain, is that not the domain? The domain is where it can... Uh, can uh, yeah. The domain is, where does the graph exist? Where is the relation defined? You said where it's yeah. not defined, right? So if someone asks you, if someone asks me, hey, what's your favourite food? And I say, I hate durian because I... I, if you don't know what durian is, then lucky you, because it's a food that, that smells like something died, and if you hit someone with it, they probably die, okay? Now, I haven't answered the question, right? If you ask someone what their favourite food is, you expect them to say, my favourite food is pizza, chocolate, whatever. You don't expect them to tell you what your favourite food isn't, okay? This is not the domain. It's the opposite of the domain. Do not say that, okay? If you prefer not to say that sentence though, which I don't, there is a symbolic way you can write this. You can say, look, I'm going to look from left to right. X can take on any value less than zero. Do you notice that? To the left of zero, I'm fine. To the right of zero, I can also take on any value. Right? I'm using this inequality notation that I've had before. This here is about the fastest you can probably say it. Okay? So I encourage you to write it that way, but either of those ways are fine. Can you write x is greater than at zero is less than zero? Did zero you just say zero is less than zero? <laughs> In answer to that question, uh, no, you cannot. Zero is less than x is less than zero. Are you thinking of this? Uh, you want to combine that into one, don't you? Yeah, x uh, is greater than or less than zero. Like that? Yeah. Is that what you're suggesting? No. <laughs> no? Uh, wait, one of them is wrong. Uh, wait, hold on, this one? Well, yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw this to the rest of the class. What do you think of that? <laughs> okay, let me give you two reasons why my answer is no. Okay, in case that was a surprise to you, but I don't want you to write this one. Number one. Number one. What the devil does that mean? Like seriously? Like that just is asking for confusion, okay? This is... <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to start. Okay? So number one, it's just unclear. It's unclear, okay? Secondly, here's my bigger beef with it, okay? When you see something like this, you're clearly borrowing from this language, aren't you? Right? And we're trying to do this as quickly as possible. I get the... You know, this is a mathematician's thing. This is the kind of thing that a mathematician would love. Except for the fact they don't because... That language is borrowing from the idea of one continuous interval, 
from here to here. Here's where I start, here's where I end. This is the exact opposite of that. This is actually a discontinuous interval. It, the whole point is that there's a break in there. It's not one thing, it's two things, right? So therefore, number one, I think it's confusing. Number two, it doesn't clearly communicate what it's trying to talk about, which is two separate things that specifically cannot touch, rather than I'm, I'm trying to strain it into notation that indicates that they are. So, no. <laughs> Tell me how to write the range. It's just like this, right? But with y's. But you can also say all real. Alternatively, you could say all real values except y equals zero, and that would be fine. 